Hello, friends. Uh, and this is the other one I was speaking about, where it's not... Uh, well, it is poetry in a sense, because uh, of the way the thoughts are expressed, but it's not the normal verse thing that I, uh, that I write and I recite to you. The title of this one is Musings Uninterrupted. Musings Uninterrupted. Live with time, not with the passage of it, for time will pass you by. You'll have to make no effort there. Time will pass you by. Live with time, not with the passage of it, for time will pass you by. You'll be left looking vacantly at the sky, on your lips a frozen sigh. Live with time, not with the passage of it, for time will pass you by. You'll be left looking vacantly at the sky, on your face, on your lips, a frozen sigh. Dreams and desires, horses from the same stable that we label hide. Dreams and desires, horses from the same stable that we label hide, and then rather riskily, more often than not, carelessly ride. Well, that's the nature of desire. Dreams, yes and no, but certainly that is what desire is. When words are deep and meaningful, the sounds promote resonance. When words are deep and meaningful, the words promote resonance. But when shallow or hollow are emotions, they only add to distance. But when shallow or hollow are emotions, they only add to distance. Very true today, friends, because of the way life has changed. Of course, change is the only constant we, we know, we speak of. And um, the way things uh, are, well, they used to be the old times of joint family and you lived in your village and you, well, you spent your life there and then you went from there. Now, of course, things are altogether different. You're uh, tens of thousands of miles away and uh, your uh, means of communication is the telephone or the FaceTime or the Skype or whatever. Uh, well, there's an awful, awful change. Uh, awful, not the big change, not awful in the sense of awful, but, uh, well, enormous change. And, uh, and therefore, the in a resonance and the meaning of friendship and, and all that goes with it is a little absent, if I might say. When words are deep and meaningful, the sounds promote resonance. But when shallow or hollow are emotions, they only add to distance. We are lean or fat, short or tall, dark or light, and that's about all. We are lean or fat, short or tall, dark or light, and that's about all. While nature boasts a variety that we can only envy, we, that's man, woman included, we're lean or fat, short or tall, dark or light, and that's about all, while nature boasts a variety that we can only envy, and yet we find a million ways to run each other down. That only shows an amply too who's the king clown between nature and man. No difficult guessing there. The distance has no meaning when hearts and minds are accordant. In Urdu, I have a, a share or part of a ghazal which says that if, you're, if, the, if your companion in life is also accordant with you, then what distance are you talking about? And then whoever is your guide, if your guide is even discordant, it doesn't matter because your companion is accordant. Distance has no meaning when hearts and minds are accordant, else what we witness is the mayhem of the discordant. I think we're thinking about friends. Fear is a form of negativity that rests upon a lurking premise. Fear is a form of negativity that rests upon a lurking premise. 
of wrongdoing. When to what is right we bid a goodbye kiss. A friend of mine uh, responded to this. I sent him a WhatsApp on it, and he responded. And he said, well, uh, uh, fear is also, uh, uh, you know, it uh, helps you maybe deal with, uh, with some situations. Well, yes, it does, but it's a negativity anyway. I mean, there is no positivity in, in feeling fear. Yes, there is. I mean, if, if you're very close to a cliff and uh, you feel you might fall off, then taking a step backwards is, is very positive, and uh, perhaps that's what he meant, meant when he had this in mind. Fear is a form of negativity that rests upon a lurking premise of wrongdoing when, to what is right, we bid a goodbye kiss. If music inspires, it conspires too. If music inspires, it conspires too to take us away from the boredom of reality to the realm of imagination, the stars, and beyond. We say, don't we, that music is heavenly. Well, it doesn't get you to heaven because, first of all, you don't know where heaven is and so music wouldn't know it either. But uh, it does get you to that state of mind where you are so engrossed that you forget everything else to the absolute exclusion of everything else and therefore you could say, You're in heaven. If music inspires, it conspires too to take us away from the boredom of reality to the realm of imagination, the stars, and beyond. You can get lost in music. You you can't sleep at night. What do you do? You put on your your favorite uh, whatever you want to hear. I heard uh, Eric Clapton uh, yesterday uh, after uh, I've done a long time, whether it's Bismillah Khan or uh, Eric Clapton or Vilay Khan or whoever else you like, or uh, Paul Robeson. It all takes you away to another world altogether, away from the daily pinpricks that we get and the, and the running after progress. I hope you like it, friends. Thank you very much. I've enjoyed it and um, glad to hear from you. Until we meet again, uh, goodbye. See you again. Take care. Thank you.